Good morning, good afternoon, if it's this afternoon for you. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well today. I've come on live to talk a little bit about uh, mid-century glass, actually. I've decided to kind of focus on mid-century glass today. Uh, I collected a bunch of things to, to show you and really maybe help you to understand sort of what it is that I look for when I'm out picking for uh, mid-century glass. Um, it's the kind of the stuff that you may not have ever um, experienced uh, in the wild, like the things that you don't know from books or websites or whatever, I'm going to try to cover off today because that's the things that I wished I knew earlier on and maybe made maybe a few less mistakes in my sort of picking choices, right? Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna share my um, a PowerPoint presentation that, that I put together just because it would be, it was easier to put it in a PowerPoint to sort of show you some of the things that I've um, accumulated over time and that I have uh, sold through Etsy. So I have a store on Etsy called Vintageris, and my name is Joni, I forgot to tell you that too. Um, and so uh, in my store on Vintageris, I have sold a few things, but I've also got some things here from my back stock um, and things that are still are listed in my Etsy shop. So all different kinds of, of uh, statuses, I guess, of the different glasses that I'm going to show you. And I'll let you know which ones are still for sale and which ones have sold and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I thought I would start off by talking about some American glass. So I'm going to go now to the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I said, this is a bit of an introduction to mid-century glass. And um, so this is the, these are the kinds of things that I look for. And you'll hear me talk about it as I sort of share some glass with you. The first thing is I look at the technique. What is, what's the technique that they've used? How have they produced this glass? Was it something that you know, has been done hastily, maybe on a manufacturing line, versus something that's been hand done and has shows signs of it. So things like how the pontil is finished. The pontil is where the glass blower would break the um, glass rod off at the base of usually of the, the object. Um, I look at the lines. What are the lines like? Are they, do I see nice curves? Do I see even um, application? Is it is it rough or is it very well put together? Because I'm looking for quality. Um, the finish. So how has the mouth of the vase, if it's a vase, been finished? How has the base been finished? Um, if there's applied pieces of glass, how have they been applied on? Is it neat and tidy? Is it simple? Is it colorful? Um, and then I also look at age. I look at how is there maybe a foil a label on it? When you see a foil label, that's kind of gold that you have probably something in from the mid-century. Um, a foil paper label. Does it show shelfware? And I'll talk a little bit more and show you what shelfware looks like. <laughs> is it dirty? You know, <laughs> is that thing absolutely filthy uh, that it looks like it's been around for, you know, the well, what are we on? We're 70 years now, right? Has it been, is it that dirty, right? So if I find something that's really dirty, then chances are high that it probably is older. Now, the other thing that I definitely look at is the color. Um, some of the companies in when uh, with mid-century glass, um, some of the com companies made only certain colors during certain periods of time. And so it's an, an easy way to really identify not only maybe if it's from a certain company or a certain time era. But of course, everything is personal preference. And I'm going to certainly show you what I like. Um, it may not be what you like. And I may be only showing you some of the pieces of mid-century glass that, that is my preference. So um, I'm, I do want to say that, that I'm just going to use it as an example so that you can learn from it. And maybe when you're out picking, you can see what, what I see. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second here. 
and just see if we have any questions or anything. So do, if you have a question, just feel free to put it in into the chat room um, and uh, happy to answer any questions about this as we go along as well. So the, um, the first company that, um, that I'm gonna talk about is Blanco. Um, so Blanco, so I've got a couple of pieces of Blanco here. So this is a Blanco vase, a pinch vase. Um, you can see that it's, you know, quite large. It's got a nice finish, fire finished rim on it. So this is what a fire finished rim looks like. So it's quite curved, right? Um, and the pontille. So remember I said that I look for pontille. So here it has a really quite rough pontille. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, and that really is characteristic of Blanco glass. So I have this one and it's in a color called Jean Keel. And it was, this was made by Winslow Anderson in, in the fifties. Um, you know, he was in production between 1947 and 53. So, you know, in that time frame, and it's quite big, like, you know, this one's about as good, <laughs> as big as my head, but I also have an even bigger one to show you. So this is the other one that I have. This is, isn't that massive? It's absolutely massive. So this is what you call a statement piece. But again, Winslow Anderson, right? And it's got that rounded fire done top um, and rough pontille again. So there's that rough pontille that we should see. Now remember the other thing that I mentioned was shelfware. So you can see really clearly that this one has some shelfware on it and you'd expect that. That comes from it sitting on, a, you know, in a cabinet or on a table or, you know, sideboard or wherever it is. Um, and it's rubbing right against that table. And so you would expect from pieces that are, you know, 70 years or more old that you would see some, you know, sort of rubbing there too. So those are the two pieces of Blanco. Um, but I've also got some on my, in the SharePoint that I wanted to show you as well. So I'll do that again. So this is a piece um, that Joel, Joel uh, Myers made. Um, the, the pattern number is 6424 and it's in lemon yellow. Now I've, I definitely use some of the Blanco sites in order to research my projects. Um, and so I've given you a couple of links to some uh, two really good websites on Blanco glass. One thing with Blanco is they were very specific about their colors. So you can really, when you're trying to research a piece to see whether or not it's Blanco, you can use these sites to make sure that the color kind of matches. Um, because there were a lot of reproductions and there were a lot of companies in the sort of West Virginia um, area um, that um, made glass very, very similar. So the other companies are, um, I'll, I'll talk about as, as well, that are in that sort of West Virginia area. Um, that really, and what is really neat about this vase here, this little, it was very quite small, and uh, but you can see it also had the rough pontille and it's a crackle vase. So that's a kind of a neat one that, that I found. And that one has sold. And then this is one of the very first pieces of Blanco that I found when I started picking. And this is an ivy ball, a pinch ivy ball. Um, and you can see that it's got the really the older foil label. Um, and that label was in production, you know, starting in the 30s. Um, again, the rough pontille, the crackle glass. So very classic sort of Blanco. This is a newer Blanco piece. Um, and you can see that it has the sort of newer label that came into production in 1982. Um, and, but again, it still has that rough pontille that's very characteristic of Blanco. And this one kind of was an easy one for me, right? Because it had the label, so I didn't have to do much research on this. Yeah, so Viking Glass is another glass company that was around in that same era. And Viking also um, made really wonderful, brightly colored, fun pieces of glass. And um, so I'll show you the, the, a couple of pieces of Viking glass. So this is something that I just found. Isn't this cool? Isn't this fun? 
Really neat, right? Look at the rim on that. It's been painted on with gold, like a, a cold um, paint of, of gold rim. And it's got the characteristic kind of chunky feet that a lot of, it, of um, Viking pieces have. So that's something fun that I just picked up. So that's going to be for sale, whether it goes into a live sale or I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I also have some other pieces of that I can share with you as well that I've uh, sold over the years. So let me share you that share that with you as well. So here's a piece of um, Viking glass. And uh, this this was a really large ashtray. I mean, it was massive. It must have been a good mm, eight inches at least, nine inches, something like that square. Um, and so it was really kind of funky and cool and would make a, an amazing statement piece um, on a, you know, tea coffee table, something like that. So this one was really fun. Um, this is another Viking piece, my piece of Viking glass from their Epic line. So Epic was a line that um, Viking was quite well known for, and they were quite um, dramatic pieces, really brightly colored. So I've got a couple of pieces of that to show you. So this one has sold, but the here's another one that I've sold that was a. a swung vase um, and again look at the foot on this one so the foot on this one really shows that it was uh, a viking piece because that's a very characteristic foot on that one um, the other piece of viking glass that i have to show you here is from their tundra series and this was a really large well you can see based on the size of that apple um, a large kind of console or centerpiece bowl that's very very cool and a really nice amber color so that was kind of fun as well morgantown so this is another company again from that west virginia area um, and they produced really interesting glass as well. And I've got a piece of it right here. So this is a piece of Morgantown glass. Hey, butterfly nurse. How are you doing today? Um, so this is a piece of Morgantown glass. It's called crinkle glass. So it's, it's from, it, or it uh, has that kind of wrinkly appearance, almost like you've, you know, crunched it up and threw it out. Um, a nice, you know, sort of fire polished bottom on that one. Um, so when I'm talking about uh, butterfly nurses, I'm, I'm talking all about mid-century glass today, and I'm going to be talking a lot about technique, um, things to look for when you're out looking for glass, and then when you're purchasing it as a new collector, what to look for, right? What to look for. So, uh, and quality pieces. So this is a piece of Morgantown glass. Um, and then I've got some on that I, uh, I've sold as well, so I'll show you those as well. This is a fun, you know, again, similar to the, the glass that I just showed you. I, I was really lucky and I found a bunch of it at a thrift shop where obviously a collector had kind of donated an amazing amount of crinkle glass, this Morgantown crinkle glass. So one thing to always look for is that kind of polished base on it. So you can see, see the base there. Um, here's another set of Morgantown glass. Um, you know, it, it came in quite a, an array of colors. The most popular colors were the red and the turquoise. There's a nice, really kind of peacocky turquoise as well in the crinkle wear. But Morgantown also made quite, quite simple, modern pieces as well that, uh, you know, are really classic. And so you can see that this one has been etched signed. So on the bottom, it clearly says Morgantown. Now I remember on that set, there was only one glass of the four that were marked. So they don't necessarily mark all the glasses, which makes it a lot of fun <laughs> when you're trying to figure out, you know, what something is. Um, so I thought it also, oh, you're in an estate sale. Whoa, that's very cool. I hope you find some goodies. I hope you find some great stuff. <laughs> so yeah, so 
they i was telling you about morgantown and the other one that i wanted to show you about another sort of north american glass company or canadian glass company was called chalet and uh chalet is getting harder and harder and harder to find but i do have this one piece that i have up for sale in my etsy store and the one thing to know if it's chalet is chalet is always um uh, marked and let me just kind of try to show if you can barely see there that chalet, it's very hard to show you. That chalet signature, it's very, very well known. There we go, maybe that's a little bit better. Let's turn it around so you can see it upright. Um, so they acid etch their name on to glass. Um, and so it's pretty clear that it's a chalet piece when you see that, that signature. Very, very, very collectible, really collectible. And as I say, it's getting harder and harder to, to find pieces. Um, another company that was in that West Virginia area that had some really beautiful glass is Rainbow, Rainbow Glass Company. And look at this piece of cranberry glass. Really, really cool. Very, really neat cranberry with, again, that coal painted foot on it um, with a gold similar to the Viking. In fact, when I found this Viking bowl, I thought that it was maybe rainbow, but it turned out to be Viking. So, so there you go. <laughs> so that's some American glass. Let me just see if I have anything else to show you on the, the slide deck here. So yeah, I've got a couple of pieces of Canadian chalet glass that I sold. So this was kind of an unusual one. Again, chalet is pretty much known for big kind of almost um, garish because they're just so big and dramatic pieces. Um, this was a kind of a subtler ashtray with a, uh, and, and attached clear leaf. So this was kind of cool as well. Um, but other companies that were, that did mid-century glass that's sort of very similar to Blanco, Rainbow Glass and Viking Glass, or Pilgrim and Kanawha. I hope I pronounced that right. George, if you're listening <laughs> or watching, <laughs> uh, please don't feel free to correct me if I pronounced it wrong. But that's another company that was in that sort of West Virginia area that was producing glass, extremely popular glass. And, you know, I had to sort of limit this somewhere. And so I didn't get into some of the other companies that were producing glass in the mid-century, like Anchor, Anchor Hawking, Indiana, Hazel Atlas, Postoria, Imperial, all of the, there's many others that I've listed here as well. And these are all other glass companies that, you know, I could do another uh, show and tell on if people are interested, if there's maybe a glass company or two that you're interested in, I can certainly try to do a more focused, um, you know, uh, talk on, on, on one of those areas. I don't typically find a lot of some of these brands. I definitely see a lot of Anchor Hawking out in the field in Canada. I definitely see Hazel Atlas, um, but some of the other ones, oh, and Ellie Smith, I would say, and Jeanette. Um, but other than that, um, you probably are more likely to see those in the US than you are in, in Canada, right? Um, so I'm going to go on now and talk about Italian glass and uh, people often just call Italian glass Murano and I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can sort of identify a Murano piece. So um, Murano pieces, so I'm going to show you one that's got a foil label so we, I'm absolutely positive it's Murano. It's a kind of fun butterfly ashtray. Um, and it's got the foil label. You can see there the foil label. Um, now, the one thing about Murano glass is because it was super, super popular, it's also been copied a lot, right? So there are a lot of reproductions on the market. And so, again, what you want to look for, and this is the most important thing when you're looking at a piece of glass and you feel that it's maybe Murano, is to really look at how carefully the crap they've done the craftsmanship. I don't know if you can see this as well, but the ribboning on this. So it's actually, there's a cranberry glass and then there's an opalescent glass as well. And it's just perfectly done. You can tell that the person that made this knew what they were doing. This wasn't, 
you know, it's not, uh, and it's quite even, the, you know, the arms are quite even. Um, so you're looking for that, those kinds of things. Weight is another thing. Typically, Murano glass is typically quite heavy. Um, the pontiel, now this one kind of threw me because sometimes these pontiels where they've kind of been polished out in the center, um, can be misleading because a lot of the cheaper glass also or the you know the reproductions also do this technique of kind of polishing out the pontille but here's a tip look for a pontille that's nice and round if it's been done again very carefully you you're, there's a good chance that it's more probably a murano piece versus something that's been made in a you know a factory somewhere very quickly okay so that's a piece of murano and that's up for sale in my Etsy shop, that piece. I have another piece in my Etsy shop that's really cool. Um, isn't this amazing? Really interesting, dramatic bowl. And what's really cool about this one is it's got flecks of silver in it. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll hold it right up. There's flecks of actual silver in there. And also you can see that the control bubbles, or the bubbles in this one, have been done very very well like there's a lot you know evenly spaced um you know there's not a lot of larger bubbles and smaller bubbles again you can see that the technique on this one has been phenomenal and it's got a very polished pontille so it's been actually polished right off so you can't really even tell whether there was where there was a pontille a very flat polished base so that's another sign of a quality piece of glass and that one is um, Bar Barovera and Toso. So that's the name of the, the manufacturer of this piece of art glass. Um, then the, the other thing that happened often too is that designers, glass designers, would go from one country to the, uh, another country and or other companies, especially within that West Virginia area for the States, but um, so, for example, there's a, an artist that I quite like that went from Blanco in the U.S. to Italy to produce some more works. Um, and I've got two pieces of his. I've got one that I've got up for sale in my Etsy shop. Isn't this cool? Look at this. So it's a big, huge compote bowl. Wouldn't that look amazing with like trifle in it or, you know, fruit, whatever. And again, as a centerpiece bowl really gorgeous and i'll go kind of come closer kind of reminds me of that sort of brutalist period um when they were doing quite interesting textures on on glass jewelry and so on so i've got this um footed compote but i've also got i want to show you a vase and this vase is part of my own personal collection so i will never sell this one it's actually quite dear to me because it was uh, my cousin's who and her my her name was Diana and unfortunately she passed away quite young um, due to cancer and but she taught me an awful lot about picking she was absolutely absolutely passionate about picking and glass um, and all sorts of, of vintage things and this one has actually the the um, the label still on it so that's what I mean about by a foil label that's what it looks like. So it's kind of paper and then foil. Um, those are really classic mid-century labels. So this is a colony piece. This is again from um, an Italian manufacturer that manufactured glass, but it's the same artist again. So you, you notice maybe some similarities between this piece and the footed compote that I just showed you. Um, so it, the, these are both done by Wayne Hust, Husted. Um, and after leaving Blanco for Stevia, um, or Stelvia, sorry, Stelvia is the name of the glass company in Italy that he moved to. So those are, oops, click, click. Those are uh, some pieces of Italian glass. Um, so again, when you're looking at a glass and you maybe think it's Murano or Italian made, again, be very careful if you're going to call it Murano that you've, made sure that the technique on it is is really quite good um so that's the uh the italian section i wanted to really talk to you too about scandinavian art glass 
because that's actually my favorite. I think of all the companies that were producing glass in the mid-century and, and the country, sorry, that were producing glass in the mid-century, I really love a, a lot of the, the Scandinavian art glass. So I'm going to show you quite a few pieces that I have, and I'll show you my absolutely most prized possession. Um, I found a, a cream and sugar set, and I'll show you it. Um, really fairly early on in my sort of picking time and i just about died when i found this i this was one of those start the car moments because this is a, a cream and sugar made by a glass artist and you can see it's kind of got a nice polished base but it's this color that's very indicative of his style and also the shape of this and this is a, a, an artist called Kaj Frank. And I adore Kaj Frank stuff. He, is, he has clean lines, very simple, very, um, hmm, yeah, just very artistic and, and minimal, minimal in design. Um, and I just love it. I mean, I think this set is gorgeous. These go for a fortune, like a fortune. I think these, a set like this would be easily 150 bucks, you know? Um, and I found it, of course, really quite cheap in a, a thrift shop. Was obviously, the person didn't know what they had there. Um, and I'd love to collect Kaj Frank, but, you know, going to have to win the lottery before, <laughs> before I can do that for sure. Um, because definitely it's, uh, you know, pricey glass to collect for sure. Um, but, yeah, I thought I would show you a few other pieces. So this is Kaj Frank, as I said, and... Um, Kosh Frank is uh, from the company called Italia. He is where he made, did a lot of his, um, you know, his main, most famous kind of designs. And um, I've got a couple of other things that are finished as well. Um, so the next one I want to show you is this uh, Tamara Al Alden. So that's the designer. So this is Tamara Alden, and she made this vase um, in the 50s. Um, and it's got what they call a top gurgle. So when they have a, a mid-century vase has this kind of bump at the top, that's they often call that a gurgle. And I want to show you, if you can see, that the rim on this has been very nicely done. And again, we've got kind of a fire polished base. Um, so again, you can tell that the technique is there. The other thing I want to really show you, if you look at this, it's really kind of hard to show you, but when you look at the line where this is, you know, the encased glass where it's a clear glass, the line here is quite smooth, right? It's not uneven at all. And all a lot of the reproductions of these kinds of, of this glassware, you you know, it wasn't even. You can you can tell almost right away that it's been manufactured in you know with very little care. Um, but those you know vases like this that have been made by an artist, you know their their technique is going to be flawless. So this is a really neat vase, and this is uh, in my Etsy shop um, right now, and it's um, listed for 110 uh, US. Let's see for in on Etsy. Um, another piece of, of uh, Scandinavian art glass that I'm going to have actually in Patrick's sale, I'm going to put a piece up, is this absolutely adorable cat. You see this cat? Let me turn to the side. He's got a bit of a snout on him. <laughs> but he, and he's a paperweight, um, very polished base. This is a Swedish company that made it. It's very similar. You might have seen... Um, out in the wild, some um, paperweights similar to this made by uh, Viking glass. But this is a Scandinavian piece um, made by, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Inerida, Inerida, um, E-N-E-R-Y-D-A. So again, a Swedish glass company that made this little cat. So I think that's really adorable. So that'll be in the live sale on October the 29th at 7 Central on Patrick, the uh, trusty Huckster Mercantile's channel. It'll be part of that live sale. Um, the other one I wanted to show you, and this is another really good example of 
well done art glass um, where you can really sort of see technique. Um, this one really clearly has what I call a fire polished rim, not I call, but <laughs> artists call a fire polished rim. So if you can see what they've done is they've got the, the, the um, vase top, you know, uh, the neck of the vase very hot and then they've polished it on a, a hard surface. So they get this really quite flat polished surface. I'm going to try to come real close so you can see that. Um, the other thing with this one, again, is it's got a nice uh, finished base. And this is called, and it's not, not super big. This one is, you know, um, would almost be called a bud, bud vase, but it's quite a large bud vase. Um, so this is called a melon vase and it was done by, uh, uh, it's an Elm uh, glass brunk. So that's the company name for this one. Um, and it was designed by Gunnar Anther, um, Ander. And this one is up for sale for 59 or 54.99 on my Etsy shop. And it's a really nice ruby red, right? Um, again, would give a nice pop of color to any kind of decor. And again, because the, the design is so minimal and simple, it's easy to fit this kind of glass into any environment. Um, another really cool set that I have listed in my Etsy shop is this one. And it's actually a set of five of these little glasses. And they're small. I'd say they're maybe three ounce, something like that. And this tall cylindrical pitcher um just gorgeous right and it's this am amethyst glass really beautiful amethyst glass really true purple um again look at the fire polished base on that so really nicely finished um and again a very simple modern design very Bo borgstrom is the designer here and so yeah so i've got the set of five little cups and this long picture um, in my Etsy shop as well. And the other piece that I've got to show you is this really neat tall um, base. Now again, look at the base of this. Can you see how that line is really a nice curve? That's another real telltale sign that you've got an actually true Scandinavian art piece. And again, look at the mouth on this one. Really good example of that really polished rim. You see how nicely that's done. So again, very well, well done. And I would call this sort of a forest green, so it's quite an interesting darker green. Um, and this tall green vase was made by Aseda Sweden. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just a really neat, neat, again, dramatic piece to add some real color and some pop to any environment. Now look at this piece. This was given to me as a birthday. I can't even show it in screen. This is how big it is, right? Huge. This, put it back here a bit so you can see. This is called a bottle vase. Um, and isn't that cool? I've sold quite a few of these over the years. Um, the, the real thing you want to look for if, it, if it's a true bottle vase by Percy, um, I always forget his name too, Percy, Arthur Percy is the artist here and do you see how there's a quite a big indent here that's what you want to look for in a bottle vase you want to really look for that and you always will see a really good finished rim as well so it, it should be quite a well done there shouldn't be any flaws you know on the cheaper ones you'll often find like a bubble or a blip here you wouldn't see that on a on a really good artisan piece okay so those are really cool. So I, uh, not only did I have this piece, but I wanna show you one of the most dramatic pieces I've found yet. So this is uh, a piece of Arthur Percy that I found, and it was a whopping 39.5 inches tall. Um, isn't that amazing? It sold for something like, I think 700 US, something like that. Um, again, I was vibrating when I found it in the thrift shop and couldn't believe my luck. And 
couldn't get out of there fast enough. <laughs> um, it had that real fire polished uh, rim at the top and the, and the, you know, indent in the base. Um, and it was just gorgeous because it, it, you know, they could look at just how dramatic it was and, you know, how pretty it was. Um, so that's another piece that, that I, uh, found early on and, and was really thrilled about. So that sold on, on Etsy. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is a couple more pieces that I sold on Etsy. Home Guard is another one that I tend to find a fair amount, at least in the beginning I did. Uh, Home Guard pieces typically are always signed. So you can see here on this bowl that, you know, it's showing how it was signed there. And um, again, the technique is absolutely flawless on these. This was a really pretty sort of hmm, organically oval bowl that uh, had a bit of a ripple to the glass as well. Just absolutely stunning and really gorgeous. Here was another one of my start to car moments when I found this piece of inboard uh, London um, and because her glass, she's really quite famous. She's really famous for this large sculpture of apples. If just to go into Google and type in, in Ingborg, uh, London, or just London um, Apple, and it should come up. Um, she, she, it was, I think, a World Fair or something. She won an award for that apple. So it became quite famous. Um, but this is a, a bowl that she made. And it was really interesting because it had inclusions, little black inclusions, and lots of bubbles. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And that, that sold in my Etsy shop for, I can't remember now, over 200 anyway. I wanted to show you another piece that um, it was copied actually by Ikea. And you might recognize this because you might, but more you might recognize it because you might have a piece at home that was from Ikea that looks very much like this. And uh, that's because Ikea, a lot of their designs were, I would say, I wouldn't say copies, I would say spin-offs of really true artistic, um, you know, Scandinavian design. So this bowl, bowl was made by Ride and it, it was just gorgeous. Um, it sold in my Etsy shop and you can see it has a really nice polished pontil on it as well. And I'll show you uh, my an Ikea version of that same one. Um, oh, and I want to show you too another piece of Cash Frank. So I was, this is that little cup, that little um, cream and sugar that I was telling you about that I really love. This is another very iconic piece of Cash Frank glass that you might see out in the wild and might not think anything of. They're little tea light holders, but again, they can go for quite good money because they're just um, again very very collectible. I'll tell you a story about me finding these glasses. So when, uh, when I was um, younger and like maybe I guess I'd been picking and been selling glass for maybe about four or five years, I, uh, I was kind of at a point where I wasn't sure I wanted to keep doing it. You know, it it's took time and energy and I just wasn't sure what I was, where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. And every single time that I've had, you know, one of those kind of doubting moments, I've had an incredible find. And so I think the universe keeps telling me, right, that that I uh, I should keep selling glass. And here's the story of, of this, this set of glasses that I had. So I one day was going to a doctor's appointment and it was a, a um, mammogram in an office where nor that's normally absolutely packed like you know standing room only in the waiting room it's horrible to try to park there it's just not a nice experience because it's a, the, a busy busy uh, office and I had to go so I left work early and so that I could find parking and I got there and rock star parking right outside right out in front I thought that was kind of odd and then I went to Starbucks and I was craving a kind of tea that they used to have, which was called Joy Tea. And it was a nice blend that I really liked. But it was like hmm, April, May, and they only do Joy Tea at Christmas time. But I was craving it. So I went into the Starbucks and I said, 
you wouldn't by any chance have any joy. And as I'd said that, I looked up and there was a row of joy tea tins. I couldn't believe it. I'd never even seen joy tea tins before. So I said, oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, how much are these joy tea tins? And uh, he said, he said, oh, they're, I can't remember. It was ridiculous, $20 or like, it was really quite expensive. And I thought, ooh, okay. I said, that's, that's pretty expensive. And I'd ordered a tea and a scone. And he said to me, you know what? Um, you, you can have the, tea, the, how about this? You buy the tea and I'll give you your scone and your tea for free. I couldn't believe it. I thought you can't can't be serious. You're giving me this, you know, my what I've ordered for free just if I buy the tea. So I thought, sure, why not? Okay. Now when does that happen at Starbucks, right? This is not Starbucks in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And so that was very odd. So then I went up to my appointment in this and as I said, it's normally a busy office. No. I was the only one in the office. I walked right up to the desk. She said, oh, hi, Joni, how are you doing? <laughs> Walk right in, you know, boom, boom, boom. I was in and out of there in five minutes flat, and I couldn't believe it. I thought, that is so weird. I never, ever experienced it being that, that quick and simple. And so, <laughs> so I thought that was odd. Well, now I had a whole bunch of time because I was meeting up with my daughter, and I had all this time. So I thought, oh, I'll just go down to the bookstore. So I went down to the bookstore and in the bookstore, and let's see if I can find the book I want to show you here. Um, in the bookstore, there was, I went to the sort of glass section, but this was the book that was presented to me. Like right there, sort of in front was this book called Lata, oh boy, Jan Daughter, I guess, Handmade Living. Now, this is not a glass book. This is a book about Scandinavian living, really, um, and sort of an art and craft. There's recipes and all sorts of things in it. But I took this book off the shelf because it looked interesting, and I opened it up to this page. This, whoops, there we go, this page here. And I could not believe, whoops, I could not believe my eyes when I saw this gray glass here, and I'm going to try and zoom up so you can whoops, see that gray glass there okay so i had a set of glasses that i was trying to identify for years i'm three or four years i had been trying to identify this glass that i had and i couldn't believe it when i you know i've opened this book and i'm standing there holding this book and i went oh, i can't believe it I, and i said it out loud i've been trying to identify these glasses and this woman sit, standing next to me turns over, looks onto my book, looks onto the page and says, oh, yeah, those are Italia. Those are Finnish. Now, <laughs> the chances of a Finnish woman or somebody that somehow is connected to Finland was standing beside me and would know because this book doesn't say who the artists are. Like it just, as I said, it's a book on Scandinavian living. So it doesn't identify the pieces. So now I want to show you these glasses that I was trying, had been trying to identify. I had these glasses for quite a long time and I was trying to identify them. And what they turned out to be was these Italia Finland Olvia Tolko flora neodyme or another word for it is alexandrite glass and alexandrite glass is glass that changes color in different lights so i can show you here i actually have a video on my uh, channel the very first video i ever did many a few years ago um, is showing these nanny still plates and how they change color so they either are this kind of purpley color or they go to a kind of a pale blue and depending on the light in the it's usually a fluorescent light where they go into kind of a pale blue and in more of a natural light it's the more the the purple or the pinky color so if you ever see glass that that has that kind of purpley pinky kind of tone to it you may have yourself some alexandrite or neodymium glass and that is a really valuable glass. It's kind of like uranium in that it's super collectible. People love it because it's so funky, because it changes color, right? 
Um, and I've got a piece here to show you. This isn't mid-century, mind you. This is Scottish glass and it's, and it's um, but it is neodymium glass. So you can see when I hold it back here, it's quite a purpley pink color. But if I come close to my monitor, at least it was doing it before. Let's just try it again. Oh, it's, you know, it's because I've got a, um, a other, uh, another light on, but, um, but it will go kind of a bl light blue. Um, it will change color in different lights. So it's really cool. This is a vase with a, a hummingbird and it's um, a Scottish company that uh, produced that. Um, Again, not mid-century, but it is the only piece of uranium or of neodymium glass that I that I had to show you. So I, you know, wanted to make sure that I I showed you uh, all of those the, or that piece because I think that's really neat. It's it's kind of fun, and that was just the most amazing thing when I found <laughs> out that you know when those glasses were worth something like a hundred bucks a piece. I mean, it was just unreal. And so I kind of took it as a sign from the universe that there were bigger things for me around this glass piece and that I needed to, to kind of keep going and keep looking at it. Um, I had another kind of fun thing happen to me recently, too. I bought a lot of things from an auction and I bought it because I noticed that there were a couple of pieces um, in the lot that looked really, really interesting to me. There's a company called White Fires and a Friars, sorry, White Friars, like the the uh, monks, um, because it was actually I think the glass company was in a monastery and then um, um, or it was a monastery, sorry, and then they turned it into a, a glass company. This is a piece of White Fire, Friars, and I've been trying to find White Friars for a long, long time because it's again very, very collectible, really neat, very, very high quality art glass. And look at this. This weighs, oh my gosh, five pounds or something. I don't know, not five pounds, but it's very heavy. It's almost like a paperweight weight. Um, and you can see that the technique on it is just absolutely stunning. Like it very, very um, carefully made. Whereas, you know, a lot of the reproductions, and there are a lot of reproductions out there for right right fires glass. Um, it's a British company, White Fires. And uh, there's a lot of people that collect it again because it's quite rare. Um, and this what is truly a piece of, of White Friars. I actually contacted the White Friars Society to to verify that I had, you know, a piece of their of their glass, and they did confirm that this is a piece of their glass. So this is one neat piece of British glass that I have to show you. And then in the same lot was this. And I was super excited because I knew that White Friars has an uh, has apples that are highly, highly collectible and are worth a lot of money. But unfortunately, <laughs> this isn't the right color. It's just the green isn't quite right, uh, is what the, the society told me. Even though it has, you know, really beautiful control bubbles, you know, it's very, very well done. It's a Czech company that uh, actually made this. And that's a whole nother area of mid-century glass that I could talk a lot about is the is Czech glass because I've sold a lot of Czech glass over the years. Um, there's some absolutely stunning, stunning pieces done, but it's not white fryers. It's, you know, worth a little bit of money, not the hundreds and hundreds or even thousands that some of the other white fryers pieces are worth. But, you know, that's the name of the game. You you go out and you try and you you look for quality and you take, you know, take your chances and see if you found something really, really cool. Um, I guess that's pretty much all I had to share with you today. I, I hope you enjoy this. Um, you know, I could do it again and, and do other types of glass. Um, Oh, the other thing I wanted to share with you, too, is books, the books that I like to use when I'm researching mid-century glass, especially the Scandinavian mid-century glass. I really like an author, and her name is Le uh, Leslie uh, Pina. And Leslie does, um, do Leslie does these amazing books, and she has this set of two books, Smoke and Ice and oh, these are heavy, ah, Fire and Ice, okay? So these are two books that she has that um, are the most amazing books 
I own. I really, really love these books. Whenever I find a mid-century Scandinavian piece, this is my reference book. It has incredible pictures, um, full color, you know, dates and so on. Lots of information about each of the companies. And the Fire and Ice or Smoke and Ice um, book is all kind of smoky glass. So there's some of the blues and the browns, the grays, clear. Um, it, it sort of focuses on that. And then the Fire and Sea book focuses on the colored, colored glass. So Leslie Pina and Fire and Sea. They're not cheap books, but I would highly recommend them. You know, just to give you a sense there, and you can see maybe one of the vases that I showed you earlier today is in the pictures here. You can see I've got a lot of stickies on these because I try to, I tend to put a sticky note when I've sold or found something, you know, um, on one of these pages. Um, here's another page that of glass that I showed you today, just to give you a sense. So it's really great because there's subtle differences sometimes between, you know, the different makers. Um, one will have, you know, like, for example, even on this one, you know, you can see some of them that aren't as it's not as sharp uh, an edge, you know, to to the shape. So it's really kind of handy to have a book like this in order to help you to identify glass. The other books by Leslie Pina that I really like is this one called 50s Glass. It's a really great book as well because it goes through Murano and Italian glass. It talks about um, um, some of the other uh, makers. It goes really into all of the American, the West Virginia uh, producers. It talks, gives you labels and markings and things like that as well. Um, you know, really beautiful um, pictures. It actually looks very fam familiar, doesn't it? You remember me showing you that? <laughs> That's the chalet handkerchief, handkerchief, handkerchief vase. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really good pictures. Well uh, researched and, and documented. So that's another really good one. And then the, the other book that I, these are kind of the four that I go to most. And that is this one, Popular 50s and 60s Glass. Again, Leslie Pina. And do you recognize this uh, um, decanter in the front, similar to one that I sold on my first live sale, um, that I, was a rainbow glass one that uh, was a pinched vase or pinched decanter. Um, I sold that on my first sale. But again, really good, you know, colorful, clear pictures. Um, let me see if I can show you catalog pages as well sometimes in here uh, let's see if I can show you that of course I can't find one when I'm looking but you know it gives you really good clear pictures the names of the different lines of glass um, again highly recommend it, these are kind of good books to kind of put on a wish list, you know, for people to buy you for Christmas or birthdays or whatever. Um, and you can also often find them in secondhand bookstores. Um, the other places I found them are on um, uh, Better World Books, betterworldbooks.com. I love that website. They sell books secondhand, and then they donate to literacy when you purchase from them. And I find that the chip shipping and everything from there is really, really reasonable. Um, and I've bought books all over the world from Better World Books. Uh, but it, those are the four, I would say, that are my kind of my number one uh, books that I go to when I'm trying to research something. But of course, I also look online, right? We all do that, don't we? We do that. The Google search, the Google image search things like that to also help us to identify. So I hope that that's kind of given you a little bit of a taste of some of the glass that, you know, that I tend to look for. Um, and, and maybe it's some that you like and you might want to try to find yourself. So I've got a bit of a challenge for you to leave you with. I just found this piece of glass. Okay. So it is definitely mid-century. It's the right color so it's a turquoise this this kind of tealy turquoise was really popular in the mid-century 
Um, this one's got a little bit of a, of a hint because it's got a little paper stamp or label there that says made in Finland. Okay. And it's got a really nice uh, encased base. So there you can see, and it's really nice. It's very clean. And it's got a bit of a gurgle here, a bit of a bend in that glass. So maybe you can help me in the comments by uh, going and looking and trying to research to figure out what who made this vase, what's, who's the manufacturer, who's the artist, um, maybe the time period. And, uh, and yeah, and we can have a little bit of a chat in the, in the comments to uh, figure out, you know, who's found out the, who's found the right answer. Notice it's got a kind of a fire, fire polish on there. And I should tell you how tall it is too, if you're researching, you need to know the measurements because often things are done, you know, by measurement. So it's about 10 inches tall. Okay, so 10 inches tall, finished glass, bit of a gurgle, you know, um, clear encased ba base, right? So help me find out what, where this is from and who it is. I kind of have some ideas myself, but I'd love to see in the comments what you think this piece is. And it'll maybe be up at a live sale. I guess that's another thing, too, to tell me if you're interested in any of these pieces being as part of a live sale, um, you know, some of the pieces that I've shown you today are still are available and, and could be up for sale. And remember that this little cat will be in the, the live sale with um, Patrick on the 29th of October. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'm sure most people will be watching it on a replay. Um, so my upcoming sales are October the 29th. A Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, and that's with um, Patrick. Um, I'm going to be one of four sellers, and his channel is called Trusty Huckster Mercantile. The other, the next sale that I'm going to do on my channel is on November the 3rd. I hope that's the date, right? right date yeah november the third which is a tuesday so i'm going to always do my sales on a tuesday night first tuesday of the month 5 30 p.m pacific um and i'm going to do my november third sale focused on christmas vintage christmas so i'm going to have ornaments and decorations and all sorts of things uh, that are vintage Christmas. So I hope you'll join me and I hope you uh, thumbs up this video and, you know, let me know in the comments what you thought. And certainly if you would like to uh, help me guess or identify that one piece of finished glass that I showed you at the end. Thanks very much for joining. Take care. Bye now.